Glory to God. We thank you that starting the tabernacle tonight, we thank you that you'll be watching uh, live and also take the late, late on in the week. Uh, we all know the, the signs of the times and what's going on in our world that's around us. Uh, with the issues with Ukraine and uh, the number of casualties as far as civilians and things of that nature, and this, that, and the other, and not just that, uh, they're even now saying a possible uh, another booster shot and this, that, and the other. And a minister, I don't know him, and came in before I worked part time today or this week. And as he was leaving, uh, he realized I was the minister, and he says, "Talk to me." And I, I was shocked with his answer. I said, with everything going on in the world, this is what the Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah. Uh -huh. He said, you're the first preacher that's told me that recently. That's a shame. Mm -hmm. And that's what prompted this particular word here, here tonight. Uh, uh, if you got your Bibles, I want you to turn to, um, I've got a little story I want to tell you. In a, in a minute. Matthew chapter 24, verse 42 through 44. And while you're turning, turning there, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Luke 27, 26 through 30. I said it wrong again. Luke, forgive me, Luke 17. That's correct. Luke 17, 26 through 30. Luke 17, 26 through 30. We're going to look at that. It's not just the world. It's not just the ones that are not in church. It's not just those that have never been saved. But unfortunately, there's church people don't believe that Jesus is coming soon. They, they, don't, they believe they got plenty of time to do whatever they want to do. Um, let me do some figuring here on my paper. This is 20, 2022. Forty-one years ago, forty-one years ago, we were in revival. I was stationed at Seymour Johnson in Goldsboro, nineteen. 81. I was 31 years old. And we were in revival at the Church of God there that I was attending. Uh, at that time, it was called Adamsville Church of God. I think today it's called Parkside, but right, right outside Goldsboro. Dynamic revival. So people were being saved, uh, people getting filled with the Holy Ghost. And it, it was a dynamic move of God in the service. And the, the man of God was preaching. He was, he was an evangelist. He was lived in Kenley, North Carolina. I don't remember his name. I can vaguely remember his face, what he looked like. But he's preached a lot on the coming of the Lord. And he got not only me, but the people convinced he could come any moment. Well, I had orders to go to Okinawa, Japan in June of that, that year. And I said, Lord, I'll never make it to Japan. You'll come before I go to Japan. Well, 41 years later, I'm still here. And 41 years later, Jesus still has not come. But it does not take away the fact that Jesus is coming, praise God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We just don't know when he's coming. Mm -hmm. But we, but looking at the signs of the time, the Bible no, 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 don't specifically say exactly what day or what hour he will come. But he gives all the signs that's taking place that Jesus is coming. Amen. So our scripture says, and I'm reading from the New King James Version, and as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Verse 28. 
likewise as it was also in the days of Lot. They ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. Verse 29. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Verse 30. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Yeah. When he comes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> People are so lax. Church folks are so lax today. I'm not talking in, generally speaking in, in many churches. Well, I've got time. I, I know I'm not exactly where I need to be with God. I've got plenty of time. Uh, I, I just put this, I, I'll do it tomorrow. I asked someone today, I said, how many people didn't wake up today? They went to bed last night, but they never woke up in this life. God says it's your time. Now the coming of the Lord to you, to, to you or me might not be when the, the rapture of the church might be when we breathe our last breath on this earth. That's why we have to be ready for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I've got plans for tomorrow. Amen. I've got plans for Saturday. I've got plans all the way to even the, into next week. Yep. But that doesn't mean that I will be here to take care of those obligations that I'm going to do uh, in the next week or so. Uh, you've got plans for tomorrow, I'm sure. you got plans for the weeks that's coming up, amen. And we got these plans. we got plans for my wife to have surgery in, in June or July. we got all these plans, but there's no guarantee that God will allow us to live to carry out those plans. Amen. Got time. Do we? I plan after the service is over to get in my vehicle and drive back to, to, to Williamson and drop Brother Larry and Sister Carol off at their vehicle. But it's no guarantee that that will happen. i got plans to take my brother to his house just a few miles or five or six miles up the road after the service. But there's still no guarantee that because God may call him home or me home before we get there. This is for us in the tabernacle, but it's a, a lot for the, those that's going to be watched from take delay all over the world. People that's lax in their relationship with God. They're lax in their church attendance. They're lax in giving their tithes and offerings. They got very lax and slack. And, and every little excuse that pump, pump, comes up, they say, well, I'll, I'll miss the church today. I'll do better next week. God help us. Help. Help. He's coming after a church. Matthew 24, verses 42 through 44 says, Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. Mm -hmm. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed the house to be broken into. Therefore you will also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming in an hour you do not expect. Now it's not saying that Jesus is a thief. It's saying that he will come as a thief. First Thessalonians 5, 2 and 4. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. And they shall not escape, but you, brethren, or not in darkness, so that that day should overtake you as a thief. What God is saying is, you that are living for God, that you're not in darkness, you know that it's coming, and you will prepare and make ready. Amen. If I knew, if I knew uh, tomorrow at one o'clock that someone was going to be at my house to break in my door and steal everything in my house, you think I'll be there? I sure would. Amen. And if I had to have a gun, of course I got one, uh, I'd have my gun there, present. The same thing about the Lord. We don't know when he's coming, but we have to be ready and, 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 and knowing that he will soon come. Matthew 24, verses 48 
through 51 says, But if that evil servant says in his heart, My master is delayed his coming, and begins to beat his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him. Yeah. At an hour that he is not aware of. And will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 25, 6 through 13. I'm giving you a lot of scriptures. And at midnight a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should be not enough for us. And you go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding. And the door was shut. Let me stop right there. A verse or two before this, all of them had lamps. The foolish and the wise. All the lamps was burning. But the wise says, we need to go get some more oil in case the bridegroom delays his coming. So they prepared and what had happened while the, the foolish the battery is going out again. While the foolish, ah, we got plenty of oil. Just like religious folks. Mm -hmm. well, I can do it tomorrow. I can do it next service. I can do it next week. And while they were doing this, their lamps went out and and, and they, they knew the bridegroom was coming. Give us some of your oil. No, we can't. We, we don't have any oil to spare. Can you imagine what would can you imagine what Lewis and Woodville would be like if the rapture took place right now, just for a second? Can you imagine how this town would be tomorrow? Can you imagine how the military would be, uh, let's say 10%, I'm just using a figure, 10% of the military were saved, and 10% of the military is taken out of here, gone. Can you imagine 10% of people in Purdue that are saved, works those lines, works those production lines, and, and the rapture takes place, and they're taken out of here. Can you imagine when everybody else reports to work the next day or whatever, a few hours later? Can you imagine the chaos? Can you imagine a, a, a sister, and she knows who I'm talking about, they had the port that lives to the left here, is driving home and taking care of her, 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 her foster kids and this, that, and the other, but she's going down the highway and the rapture takes place, and guess what? She's gone. But the car is still going 60 miles an hour down the highway. What's going to happen to that car? Can you imagine the plane that's got 400 people on the plane? They're flying at 35,000 feet, about 500 miles an hour, and, and that pilot's saved, and the co pilot's saved, and the rapture takes place. Where's that plane going? People need to wake up. You're on an Amtrak train or a train in, in, the, world, in the world. Maybe it's not, maybe it's not the name Amtrak. In, in your country that you, you're in Washington. And there's eight, nine hundred people on the passenger train traveling a hundred, a hundred fifty mile an hour down the track. And the engineer and the conductor and all of them are saved and, and the rapture takes place. Where's the train going? People need to stop and think. I got a lot more scriptures, but I, I, I want to share a story. This is a true story. Harry Truman, not 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 the not the uh, the president of the United States. Another Harry Truman. He was born in 1896. He was in the army. He got an honorable discharge from the army. 
He'd been married three times. He had been a child. He was a businessman. And he owned a lodge at Mount, at, at Mount St. Helens. Remember Mount St. Helens that erupted back in the 1980? Up in the Oregon, Washington area. Well, he lived there. And they warned him and warned him and warned him because all of a sudden there was a rumble and there was, there was a earthquake and things like that. Too. And so all the, uh, the scientists were saying that this volcano is going to blow. They tried to get him to leave. They warned him. He needed to get away. He said, no, no, no. I've lived here my whole life. I'm, I'm, 80, I'm 83 years old. I'm not going nowhere. I've got plenty of booze. I've got plenty of liquor. I've got plenty of food stored away in a mine shaft. If something was to happen, I'd go to the mine shaft. But I'm, I'm okay. He was warned just like people are warned that Jesus is coming back. On May 18th, 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted. And the ash of that lava from the volcano went down the side of that mountain and, and they said that he died in one second. It buried him in several hundred feet of ash and rock. They said the ash was so hot it vaporized him in one second. Well, his life's over. But according to the way he was living, he won't write with God. And if you're not right with God, when the rapture takes place, you're not right with God, guess what? You will burn forever and ever and ever and ever and ever in an eternal hell. So chances are Harry Randall Truman. He probably didn't feel no pain whatsoever when that volcano erupted and lost his life as far as a physical life. Or pain. But if he's not right with God, God help him. Yeah. I don't want to preach stuff like this. Jesus. People, I'm looking at the camera. It's time to get right with God. I pray that he don't. But the president of Russia, Russia could order a nuclear attack. I pray that he doesn't. But if it does happen, can you imagine the millions or thousands of people that will lose their lives? We've got a dangerous, dangerous, now I'm not, we've got a dangerous, dangerous world, this reality that we live in. We thought 9-11 was bad. It was bad. Don't take anything away from that. Thousands of people lost their lives because of 9-11. Pearl Harbor was awful. All the Jews that got killed under Hitler was terrible. But the Bible says it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Somebody needs to hear this. Yes, Lord. I don't know who you are. But I want to make sure that my heart stays right with God. Yes, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father. I want to make sure that if God calls me tonight, and I know that I know that I know that I know that I know that, I know that, I, that I'm saved. And I have to ask him every day, Lord, if there's anything in my heart not right, Lord, take it out. Show me that I can get rid of it. Jesus is coming. Yes. But even though Jesus is coming, we still prepare for tomorrow. Amen. Amen. The pastor, before we went online, uh, began to make comments of, of the progress we made on our property here in Lewiston. So even though Jesus is coming, we prepare that we'll be here another 50 years and growing together ministry, praise God. We still do things that needs to be done. We still do improvements and things to help people, to draw people. 
to encourage people to come to Christ. Yeah. So we're still working. We're still laboring, praise God. We're not just standing still, sitting in a corner, twiddling our thumbs, I'm waiting for Jesus to come. No, that's, not, that's, that's, not, that's not the kind of waiting that Jesus is saying to it. Amen? We're still working and laboring for our Master doing what He's called us to do. Father, in closing tonight, I pray, God, that you'll touch those that heard these words, brief words I had to speak tonight, God. Yes. As it was in the days of Noah. And God, in my prayer tonight, I'm thinking that when Noah had preached 120 years, that a flood was coming. <clears throat> Only his immediate, immediate family went into the ark. I can kind of picture in my mind the people are walking around doing everything that they normally would do in that day. I can see in my mind, God, that a person begins to scream, what was that? Something hit me on the shoulder. And they begin to look and raindrops begin to hit them on the shoulder, which had never rained on the earth before. And God, as the rain began to get heavier and heavier and heavier, the rain was running down the brows of their face into their eyes. But God, you had already shut the door of the ark. And they were beating on the ark, on the door, let us in, let us in. But God, it was too late. God, we know that you're soon coming after a church without spotting blemish. Yes. I pray God those that in the tabernacle those that's watching live if they got issues in their heart that's where it's not needs to be God we pray that you'll cleanse their heart right now wipe it clean God wipe it white as snow God where they, look, they can know with an assurance that they are saved and ready to meet the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords if this was the day that you would call them home. Yes. God will give you the glory, the praise, and honor for all your precious and righteous name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. 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 God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.